And hello everyone. Before we begin, I wanted to talk about transferring the image onto your paper. And so simply graphite the back and then turn it over and trace it with a ballpoint pen. At this stage, we are adding water to your paper to saturate it and, and then um, we'll get started in terms of adding paint. Uh, the first thing I did was to add some blue to the background, just a little bit of a cool contrast to the saturated flesh color that I'll be adding onto the painting. <clears throat> As I'm working, I'm just really pushing uh, the, the blue around and just adding uh, texture. I'm going to start mixing up the uh, the darker area for this section and uh, I will be pushing the, the contrast a little bit here and, <clears throat> and just defining all the bigger shapes and the darker uh, forms just to define the, the, the portrait. In this section, I am starting with the eye and making sure that I've got the darks um, and the iris and the um, in there to make sure that I've established uh, where those uh, references are as because I'm going to use them as a guide. Now I am working on the hair a bit, adding a little bit more color just to make sure that I start to build up the both the values and color and saturation since there's a lot of color in her hair. Um, I'll be mixing uh, now a little bit of an kind of an orange uh, simple flesh color uh, that I will start using water to move it around a little bit I'm trying to make sure that I don't get muddy. I took a little bit of the red and added to, to the cheeks and again watering it down with the brush and now adding a little bit more of yellow to start mixing a flesh color that is a bit more clean. Um, as I'm going through this process, I'm wiping off the brush and also dipping it into clean water. Um, I'm finding where my, my lights are at and utilizing yellow as the highlights, but also really thinking about what is coming forward and what is moving back. I am deepening up around the eyes right now and really thinking about how the socket is moving back and I need to cool those areas a little bit more, uh, but I know with watercolor is I need to go slower. Uh, because I can't really take away the dark once I put it on there. So making sure that I establish where the bottom eyelid is is really quite important because I know there's a bit of a flesh area in that spot where it will um, uh, catch a little bit of the highlight. Uh, I am continuing to build up my reds and making sure that I don't lose uh, the highlight on the nose. Noses are always a bit tricky. I'm putting a little blue on the underplane of the nose to establish the coolness and again to push it back. But the nose is like a pyramid. So there are <clears throat> the, the three sections to it. So making sure that again, I don't lose that shape. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more saturation color to the left side just to push the uh, the the colors a little bit more. I can always uh, take a little bit off and also then neutralize it a little bit more with the complement colors. But right now I know that those areas are dark, so I'm not afraid to add those colors and I will continue to build up from that. Uh, as I'm working again, I'm really paying attention to where my lights are at. I'm trying really hard not to lose them. And right now I'm creating a really bold move here by adding a huge section of the red 
and adding just a little green and blue to neutralize the edges a little bit to turn the edge of the face towards air. And since the green reflection on her hat and also the cool of the background being blue, I'm adding a bit more of a greenish blue to the side plane again, just to turn um, the edges. I'm building up my reds a little bit more. Uh, um, again, I'm not afraid to to add those colors. Again, keep in mind you can always take some off. It's better to have some on there than not to have them at all. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, the muddier your colors are, it's due to the fact that you aren't um, wiping off your brushes enough or you're not cleaning them off enough. Um, you can also at this step if you wanted to to empty out your your water container and get a new new and get some new water i'm going to go ahead and keep building up the darks here by adding almost kind of a purplish blue uh, and then really pushing the depth a little bit more i've got some sienna there mixed with a little bit of french ultramarine to deepen up the shadows um, I will continue to just keep adding, keep subtracting. Keep in mind again, you can always pick up some of that, the the water and the and the color with your brush or with your Q-tips. Um, at this step now, what I'm doing is uh, I'm mixing a bit of a darker color, uh, and I'm gonna start applying it to uh the the side plane of the face and the hair just to establish my edges. Um, I'm going to put the eyebrows on there. She's got some deep eyebrows. And again, just really finding the, the dark areas. Uh, but I'm going in and really making sure that my hand is steady. I can always use a bar that goes across my painting if a lot of things are wet and if my hand is shaking. Um, I do mix quite a bit of darks here and the darks are mixed with um, a mix of the blue and red and brown and some green really pushing all those uh, the darks in there some of it because I don't have black on here that I did not squeeze out uh, some of my the the black can either be a cooler black or a warmer black um, right now I'm okay with it being kind of purplish blue um, and, and deepening up a little bit more with the reds. I'm continuing again to really establish that side plane of that face, paying attention to the bone structure of the skull, thinking about how things are protruding, thing, thinking about how things are uh, moving backwards and coming forward. Keep in mind that the areas that usually get quite red are the areas that where the bone is hitting up the surface or up near the surface of the 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 skin on top of the bone and so those are the going to be the the most the areas that will get the the most blood in the circulation um one thing to keep in mind now i am starting to add a little bit more greens and blue really thinking about the cooler uh, areas to again the contrast between the cool and the warm uh, cool again uh, being used on um, the inside of the the eyes and also the side plane of the face to to push it back the nose and the lips are always a little tricky right now I'm establishing establishing the lips uh, the shape of it really paying attention to um, uh, trying not to lose that edge um, and also as I'm working on the nose I'm also noticing there's reds and there's darker areas on the side of the nose the trick to the nose is that you are painting the things around the nose or things around the lip not so much just the nose or the shape of the nose the edges of those uh, the side plane of the nose and the lip will again give you that volume but um, establish the shape of those um, the nose the eyes and the lips the more the, the detail areas um, I am again just bouncing back and forth between cool and warm saturated colors clean colors um, really going in and taking a bit of the darks and establishing um, the the um, the iris and 
and making sure that I've got, you know, a little bit of the pupil and things like in there so I don't completely have just a a dark, dark, um, dark eyes where she looks a, a little bit of, like she's dead or something. So I'm going in and really establishing her eyebrows again. She's got really thick eyebrows and that's going to help really define the contour of her face and again the shape of her skull. It's really important that you find the arch of the eyebrow, really thinking where where that uh, bone is hitting up against that that head, um, that forehead. Um, I'm being very careful. I'm taking a smaller brush, one of my water brush. It actually holds a really nice edge to, to get the eyeliner that she has on there. I'm adding a little bit more of the water to really push that mascara out so then it's just not um, a weird line. I'm softening up the edges a little bit, going in and um, now defining the shape of the hat. Uh, bouncing back and forth between, uh, again, getting the underplane of the nose, uh, making sure that I've established the cool and the and, and making sure that I've got the ball of the nose still in, in its place. The other thing to keep in mind is that, um, again, to really shape the nose with the edges uh, versus it just being up on top, the edge of the nose and the side plane is going to define that form again. And I am not touching that light. Uh, you'll notice that long highlight across her nose. I'm keeping that as the whites of the paper for right now. As I'm going through the eyes and really darkening everything up, keep in mind that watercolor uh, is three times lighter after, uh, after when it dries, after you've put it on. So it's this constant need to keep building up and adding saturated colors. Um, right now I'm like establishing the lips, um, getting the bottom and the top, leaving the center, um, white for right now and then I'm going to pick up a bit dark to just really establish that um, the crevice uh, and, and the separating the top from the bottom. Being careful that some of that area is a little wet and I noticed that so I'm going to have to pick up some of the water a little bit. I'm being a little impatient. Ideally what you can do is you can wait for it to dry a bit or if you have a um, a blow dryer you can use that as well uh, and so so then you're not you're controlling the water a, li a little bit more and it's not bleeding everywhere uh, this is a bit of a three-quarter view and so keep in mind that the edges of the face is really important and if you need to push it out a little bit more you can do that um, Again, going through and adding a little bit cool and more dark to that side of that nose um, <clears throat> and thinking again about how it, it is turning and the shape of which it is um, uh, that it's established on her face. Um, <clears throat> as I'm working at the bottom, I am constantly again bouncing back and forth before from cool and warm keeping that in mind that in watercolor that it is watercolor it's not oils it's not acrylic leave some of those kind of nice nuance um uh those natural areas where the water is just starting to dry up and and create these weird kind of cracks and crevices and i think that's the beauty of watercolor is um obtaining the nice watercolor aesthetics um, and not being afraid again as I'm working through this to to add those saturated colors but then to also uh, pull some away as well the muzzle area is really an area that's a bit complicated it's an area where where it's really shouldn't be too cool or else it will recede too much and if it's too warm then it's going to come forward too much I'm not afraid to add more of the reds on the cheekbone because um, I'm really pushing her colors a little bit more, more so than it is on her uh, picture. And that's important for me because, again, you are the magician. Nobody's going to look at your photograph. You can adjust temperature. You can adjust uh, the light. If it needs to be lighter or more contrast, I would suggest you do that. 
Um, it's all about making a beautiful painting uh, and, and, and really pushing um, uh, the aesthetics, but also the medium of watercolor. I think the whole point of watercolor, again, is that it, it's such a versatile medium to transport with you anytime you're traveling. The downfall of water uh, watercolor is as you are working on um, a portrait or anything really is that you cannot go any um, any lighter. So you have to really be careful that you do not lose your lights and your medium values. Um, and, and But you can always build up your darks. The other thing is, as I'm working through this, is really in the detail, pushing uh, the darks around the face to give it a more contrast uh, and to really uh, allow the light to to glide across her face. Um, there's a lot of colors in the hair, so I'm gonna go with a bigger brush to not be afraid to just take straight paint right off of my palette and apply it right onto the paper. Uh, and this is to help with the saturation of the color, but also it allows me to not wait for the, uh, to keep layering on the darker colors. Um, I'm just going to add straight paint in, into those areas. Um, it does become thicker. And if you allow for some of those areas to dry, you'll notice that it naturally will, well, kind of do whatever it needs to do with if you've got a lot of water on there or you've got less water. The other thing I'm doing right now is a little bit of dry brushing. Not a ton of it, but just enough just to get the the shape of the hair um, and, and giving a little bit more strands to the hair and things like that. Um, I'm adding a little bit more of a deeper pink, an orange, uh, a yellow, again, um, having an underpainting of that, and then I will go over it with a bit more of the dark. I'm going to add a little bit more of the warmth also on the hat and on, on the right side of the hair as well, um, just for harmony, but also uh, there, there are those colors there, and I'm going to take a little bit off because I don't want it to take away from the face. So I want to keep the face fairly warm, but also that's where the most light will be at. Um, so as I'm working through the hair and really defining those strands, I want to take away a lot of the medium and the light values uh, just to, again, because her hair is dark, but because I want to make sure that the first thing you see across the room is, is her face. Um, even though the hair, the way that I'm painting it, is creating a composition where it is moving through the painting and the strands are really allowing for uh, the movement, but also really pushing um, the darks again to suggest the direction and the flow of the hair. Hair, like anything else, has uh, you want to establish it with some of the darks as well as a foundation for and support for all those larger shapes or those colors. Um, again, I'm adding a little bit more of the reds to the side of the, uh, the face, but also up above the forehead where there's a lot of, of really rich colors in those areas. Um, and now I'm establishing a little bit more of the darker values on the hat again. And you notice the as you're watching this video that um, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of color and a lot of darks just to establish those um, those harder edges uh, because it's watercolor. It's not oils. It's not acrylic. Um, and it's definitely one of those mediums where it's not as forgiving. So as I'm working through the lips, I am, uh, I created a, I mixed up a darker color for the top um, lip. And most of the time the upper lip is going to be a bit darker than the bottom lip. The light usually is reflecting off of the bottom lip where it's casting um, the shadow up from above is why the darker lip is much, the upper lip is much darker than the bottom lip. Um, as you're working on the eyes, I'm adding a little bit more of the coolers and the, and the darker sh colors again, um, 
just to really push the eye socket back and so she doesn't look buggy. I think it's always difficult for um, uh, to, to really get those dark areas in, and I usually will glaze a little bit, really thin films of color on top of another color, um, just to, to create that depth that I want with the watercolor. The other thing is as the side plane of the nose, I'm again, really defining those edges um, and really creating more of a warmth, but also right under the plane of the nose, the cast shadows. I wanna make sure that those areas are cool just to raise the nose up and so it is not flat. Um, and so the nose is always the most difficult area, I think, because there's such small fragments and, and little bits of, of light and color and, and cool and warm. Um, just keep in mind that the underplane of the nose is usually really cool and a bit darker. So if you can get that um, on there, then you're, you're almost um, to the finish line. But this is the part in the painting where uh, the detail is the fun part as I'm um, adding more greens and darks under the eye, establishing the lines and, and really again pushing the values, making sure that my drawing is correct, constantly drawing and painting at the same time. Um, uh, and now I'm adding a little bit more of the yellow onto the side plane just to really push uh, the the brightness of the painting as well. As I put it on these areas, I will wash out my brush and then take a little bit more water and take a little off um, uh, because I, I don't want it too bright, but also I want it to make sure that it is um, uh, being pushed around and, and that it's a, it's a lot smoother. I think the hardest part of the watercolor is leaving the watercolor aesthetics alone and not overworking the painting. Um, I think through time, uh, having confidence to leave those bigger shapes and those watermarks is something that um, I can see where I would, would, would love to make a little bit more of an abstract painting where um, I'm not so much concerned uh, about you know the perfect structure the perfect color but more the suggestion of the portrait or the figure um but it's definitely a, a medium you know that's that's not the easiest thing to use um again i'm going through with more of the the detail brush to just really push the darks and make sure that my shapes are correct um the lights um and the whites of the eyes. Keep in mind that the whites of the eyes is just not white. Uh, there will be a little bit of gray on the right on the side and also a little bit of a tinge of pink to suggest blood um, because the ball of, it's, it's a ball inside there and so you want it to look round and so it definitely is just not white on the inside of the eyes. Um, I'm always constantly pushing the eyes back just with darkening those areas. Uh, I think going slower is 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 a uh, being cautious versus going too fast. Um, again, you you can't really go backwards, and so if if you get you know if you lose your lights, um, you have a couple options. You can either try your best to take a stiffer brush to get rid of some of the color. The other ways to take white off is simply by, um, you, you could uh, add some gouache to that area. You gotta be careful because gouache is a bit more opaque, it'll mix with your watercolor, but people do use a white gouache at, on the very highlights of things uh, to really, um, suggest that that bright brightness that you need that you sometimes can't with getting watercolor zinc white the other thing to do is you could lightly sand it but that's almost um kind of uh i would caution over that because if you sand it too much what would happen is that um the those pores will open up you'll break down your paper and the um and the watercolor paint, if you paint over on top of it, it will create a weird texture. Um, so either use a masking fluid, um, masking tape, anything to kind of create a stencil if you're worried about an area that is really, really light. Um, I'm gonna keep working on the bottom of the nose, really pushing um, the separation there and also 
the nostril getting the darks darks there but just where the nostrils at also there's always a little bit of red that's under the plane of the nostril um and uh, that's it's where the blood is flowing through in there as well um, establishing some of these harder edges will help define and bring that face forward it really all is in the detail i think as as people are working on these types of portraits it's it's definitely practice um lots of hours to really think about the form but also thinking about shape um, shape is so important and, and negative space, I think, sometimes is more important than positive space uh, because the negative space defines the positive space. So if you get that right, then you're going to get the positive space right. So practice your positive and, and negative space. The other thing is painting from life is really quite important. Yes, I'm painting from a photograph. Um, but if you want to get better uh, in painting portraits, I definitely would suggest that you paint from life and you can use yourself as a reference um, and you will practice, uh, be able to see the nuances and, and the way the light hits uh, goes over the form where sometimes in a photograph, um, it's really quite flat. Even using this photograph, I've noticed that the there's a lot of flatness to it, um, even though the photograph is, is pretty good. So I'm really pushing the warmth and the cool and the bone structure and the darks and the lights. And even in the lip, I'm making sure that the edges are really quite soft. Just at the bottom of the lip, you do not ever want to create this line that goes all the way across where it's closed in. You want a softer edge there to make it look like because there's a fat pocket there that just goes across that form. And by doing that, then it, it looks like the lip is part of the face versus it being on top of the face. It takes a lot of practice to really pay attention to those little, little subtleties of the face, um, but there's little tricks to it. Um, and, and again, where the lips are at, the lights where it's hitting the bottom lid of the eyes, uh, the flesh that is just around, you know, the inside of the eyes and also the, the tear ducts and things like that are important as well. Um, as you're going through this, I'm, I'm really just adding a lot of detail here. I'm going to add a little bit more green to the hat. I think I'd, I'd like to really push the darks a little bit more above her face um, just to make her face pop out a little bit more in the brightness again. Adding a little bit more green and bluish underneath her eye. Again, really pushing the darks there, um, moving her her eyes back a little bit more. They're a little too light. Um, I definitely could go back on this and allow for it to dry a little bit more and, and go back on top. Um, watercolor, you definitely could get darker the next day. Um, getting lighter, though, on the other hand, is a, a little bit more tricky. So um, keep in mind to go from light to dark. Unless there's an area that's just really dark, then you can just go ahead and add those darker bits and those um, those shapes because uh, it's dark anyway so you, there's no point adding 10 layers of darks when you can go ahead and add it straight from the tube of paint um, or mix your darks obviously um, I'm going in and adding a little bit more richer reds in some areas um, and really pushing again uh, the richness and this kind of uh, lizard and crimson mixed with a little blue for her lip where it's a bit darker um, it's her lipstick that she's chosen normally I would think her lip would be would not be as dark as I'm going through this and really thinking about what I want to finish I'm thinking the overall painting um, you know what are the dark areas I want to push what are the light areas I want to push um, she's starting to come together a bit more I'm going in with a, a darker color to again suggest the strands of some of the darker shadows of the hair uh, because she does have a lot of color in her hair um, and the beauty of hair is, you know, you can add more hair, you can add less hair, but don't forget that hair also has structure as well. And even in clothing and in hats, um, keep in mind that the shape, the hat is on top of the head, it's not part of the head. And so creating that volume to suggest that there's a ball underneath that hat is really important. Um, 
And so that's another reason why people paint from the nude figure is because there's no clothing that you have to suggest the form underneath. And so um, if you're practicing, uh, you know, just take your hat off and, and it'll be a lot easier than you can see the top of your head. Um, as I'm working on, again, the side plane of her nose is such a tricky bit that I'm going a bit slower here, making sure that I establish, again, that underplane of the nose, the cooler bits of that, going in with edging her face again because the watercolor dries three times lighter, um, not being afraid to just add that straight red onto the side of the face, and I'll let that dry to see uh, how light it comes out. I've noticed that the more I work with watercolor, that um, having that confidence to leave those really saturated colors is really important because I can always take some of it off. And that's the beauty of that is that unless you've tried, you don't really know. And so this painting, I didn't start out as a monochrome, but more of spotting these um, bigger planes and spotting the colors. And then from that, really developing the um, the, the layers and the glazes on top of, of the, the portrait. Um, I think I could push a little bit of the background for the coolness of it and, and play with background a little bit more as I'm going to detail in here. Um, I'm not afraid to really, again, go into the bridge of the nose, making sure that the, the planes on top is a little flatter. Um, her nose is not um, a beak, and so there uh, there is a flat plane up on top. At the bottom of the lip, I'm going back in and establishing the darks a little bit more there as well. Um, you can go either darker or lighter, but definitely the, the, the separating the two in that area, making sure that you do define them or else they're all just going to collide together. Um, the other thing is that uh, that side plane there, I just want to make sure I cool it a little bit because... Um, I don't want it to fall off the side of the face, so cooling it's going to turn it again towards air. Um, there's six parts to a lip, and so um, if you were drawing it, you'll notice that um, technically, if you were drawing it, you'll notice that there are different fat pockets in the way that the planes of the lips define that form. Um, going through the underplane again for the eyes, I'm just making sure that her eyes don't look dead and I'm going in and just again adding more darks in those areas, um, really pushing, pushing the cools a bit more, not being afraid to put the darks on there and then if I need to lightly take it off with a clean, um, a clean brush. The other thing is that um, using the paper towel is also important. I know I use a paper towel and I also will use uh, a cloth, um, but if I use a paper towel, I'll notice how much paint I'm taking off, how much water I'm taking off. That gives me an idea of, of gauging uh, the, the amount of pigment, but also thinking about how much water it takes to apply that pigment onto onto my paper because that paper is going to suck up quite a bit of that water um, and even though I've gone over these areas again with the darks I'm going back on top of them um, pretty much straight from the the dark dark blue and the mix of the black that I have on there um, again giving her a bit more contrast of value um, at the end of the day, again, keep in mind that you're painting a, a pretty beautiful portrait and, um, and this way of working is, is really pushing the reds and the cools and the warms and the darks uh, and that's how you're going to get a more classical approach. But again, I think the beauty of watercoloring is allowing for the water to just kind of do its thing. Uh, but that's also a level of confidence that it's really hard to leave those areas alone. Um, the other thing is uh, don't forget to uh, to empty out your water again. As I'm working through here, I notice that um, I probably should empty it out even though I've got a bucket that has a, 
a separation there. Um, do make sure that you do that or else you're if you're going to get muddy. And so one of the things we don't think about is that um, if the water's muddy, then your painting could be muddy as well. Um, as I'm going through this again, just a lot of the details of the face um, and adding the, the harder edges to the eyelids, making sure the eyelids isn't too too um, bright because again, it's really that bridge of the nose that's really quite light. Uh, so be careful with your lights. Make sure that you're paying attention to your lights using that as a reference. One thing to keep in mind is that the first thing you should do in any painting is the what is your lightest lights, what's your darkest dark, um, and then you'll have a beautiful painting. So 